Let me show y'all how we cook an easy shrimp po' boy. <laughs> The first thing we want to do before we even get started on our po' boys is honestly prep some vegetables to make it easier on ourselves. So I love red onion on my po' boy. You use whatever onion you like, but I'm gonna get some lettuce diced up. I'm gonna get this onion sliced, the tomato sliced, and a few pickles on a tray where I can make it easy to build my sandwich. Now for those of you that cry when you slice onion, you can always put a matchstick in your mouth unlit. That's what my grandmother taught me and it actually does work. But unless you're slicing a whole lot of onion, I don't think you need a matchstick or any goggles or anything else. Completely up to you. Now, one of the last things I do before I get this back in the fridge to stay chilled while we fry our shrimp and everything, get our sandwich ready, I'm gonna take a little bit of my everyday rub. Salt, pepper, garlic, a few other good herbs in it. Get that lid off and I'm gonna go over these tomatoes. You know, you gotta have a little bit of salt and pepper on them tomatoes, you want a little bit of flavor. You always want to build your sandwiches in layers of flavor. So I'm going to get this back in the fridge now, of course, after I snack on another pickle. Put it up and get set up and ready to fry some shrimp. All right, now let's make a special sauce. This is my version of a rumulade, and I probably screwed that name up, but it really doesn't matter to me because I suck at pronouncing stuff now that I'm out of school and almost 50 years old. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to take some of a classic blue plate mayo I'm gonna say about three quarters of a cup. Maybe closer to a cup, I don't know. I'm gonna come back with a little bit of good old dill pickle juice. Probably a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of that. And then I'm gonna come back with a little bit of that good old crystal hot sauce. You can use Louisiana, crystal, whatever you want, completely up to you. Now I'm gonna come back with a little bit of W sauce. Let's go about a tablespoon and a half of W sauce. Let's get a little bit of gray poupon here. About a good tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of that. Now, you know we're gonna add a little bit of color. I'm gonna use this smoked paprika in here. About a good tablespoon of that. Now I'm gonna go about two tablespoons of minced garlic. And today I did not chop my own garlic. I'm gonna go half of a lemon here. You wanna make sure you're trying to get no seeds in. Now, last but not least, you want a little bit of your favorite Cajun rub. You can use anything you want. I'm using my Cajun Creole garlic butter today. A tablespoon or two tablespoons of it, it's completely up to you however you like it. Carefully not spill any of this and get it all mixed around. Now, you can make this unique and put relish in it. You can chop shallots and put in it. It's completely up to you. I'm just having onion and pickles on my po' boy today so I don't put that in my sauce. Now I'm gonna get that whisk out of that and I'm gonna put just a little more Cajun Creole rub. I want a little bit more spicy than that. All right, now that we're all mixed up. Perfect. We'll get in the fridge, let those flavors all marry together and we're gonna cook some shrimp finally. All right, the first thing we wanna do to get started on our shrimp po' boy, I've got my shrimp here. These are raw, already peeled, and deveined extra large shrimp. These are 2130 count. You can use whatever you want. You can already buy pre-breaded shrimp. It's completely up to you. Depends on how lazy or how much effort you wanna put into your sandwich. Me, I like deep frying fresh shrimp because it's a better taste than the frozen ones. But you do you, I'm just doing me. I never say that I'm the only way to do something and I just want everybody to know that. So let's take a pound of these shrimp. I'm gonna take an egg, one egg, crack in there. Let's go ahead and get another egg cracked in there. Better wipe that egg juice off my hands. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of yellow mustard. I've got a little bit of Fireshire left here of W sauce. I'm gonna use a little bit of this Fireshire here. That was probably two tablespoons of Fireshire. And I'm done with that bottle. That means I gotta go back to the store. All right, now I'm going with some crystal hot sauce. You can use Louisiana crystal, anything you want. Get a good old dose of hot sauce in there. Now y'all know I'm coming back with that Cajun Creole garlic butter rub. You can use any of your favorite Cajun seasons you like. Mix them, match them, it don't matter. Completely up to you. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of this buttermilk in here. Now once I get that in there, it's time to get in here with this glove hand and get it all mixed around. Now, 
If that color don't change, that means you don't have enough seasoning. Season some more. At least that's what I say. So now I'm gonna get that glove off. I'm gonna get ready to heat some oil up and get ready to make some batter. Let's get started. All right, you can see I've got some oil in my skillet here. I'm using my Yeti cast iron pan today to fry this shrimp. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this, uh, picked up this Cajun land fish fry seasoning at the store. I'm gonna go ahead, this is for all types of seafood. Just makes it easy. I'm gonna get a little bit in here, about half of this. And I'm gonna put a little bit of cornstarch in this just for a little bit of extra crispiness in this fish. Well, that was not good. That was a boo-boo. A little bit of cornstarch in there. And I guess I should clean all that up here. All right, once you get all that mess cleaned up, you got your cornstarch and your seasoned fish fry already in here, I'm gonna come back and add a little bit of my favorite Cajun rub. You use your favorite Cajun rub. I want these shrimp to ensure they have some good flavor to them. Now I'm gonna be sure I seal this up before I shake it. And fold it over. Now, one good key, key trick while your oil's coming up, you fish, you fish, your shrimp is kind of marinating there in your marinate, your wet mix. Before you get it over here and dry it, I need to go get me a plate, get it all battered and get it on a plate and start working in my, my oil here once it comes up to 350 degrees. So, we'll be right back. Let me grab a plate. We're gonna get these shrimp battered. All right, now that our shrimp's been marinating, our oil is a little over 300 degrees. I just checked it. We're gonna keep letting it come up to temp, but I wanna get these shrimp out of here, get them in our seasoned batter, and start getting them shaking around. You just wanna shake off as much excess liquid as you can. I'm probably gonna put about half of these shrimp in here. Bread them, take them out, and keep doing the process. Now, this is a redneck way of doing things. You can, uh, you can do a paper bag, you can buy you one of them fancy breaders they got. You can do all that mess. You can bread it by hand on a paper plate. I just do it in a Ziploc bag and fold it over to keep from making a huge mess. But you do it however you like to do it. Now, once I get those shrimp breaded, take them out here, shake off any excess, and throw them down. Let's see if that grease is ready to fry. We were about 320 a while ago. I'm sure we're good. Oh yeah. Now the longer you let these shrimp hang out right here in this batter, the more it seems like the batter sticks to them. Now that's all I'm gonna put in that pan right now. I'm gonna keep my other ones over here. Move my thermopin. Whoo, I got stuff all over me. That's the big thing with frying. You guarantee you're gonna get stuff all over you. All right, I'm gonna say these shrimp are about done here. Let's ease some of them up. Ooh, would you look at that. Now, while I got this glove on, let's go ahead and get these other shrimp laid in here. All right, now that we got all those shrimp laid in, I can slide that pan over and I can grab some of that everyday rub because that's sure what I'm gonna dust on these shrimp here. That's just what they need, a little dose of that. Now while these shrimp are cooking, y'all know I'm not gonna wait any longer. I gotta have one of these. All right, I'm gonna call it a day on these shrimp. All right. Cut my eye off here. Give my shrimp a little dust into that good old everyday rub, that salt, pepper, garlic with a few other things added to it. Let's grab my French bread and my toppings and come back and build a good old shrimp po' boy. All right, as you can see, our shrimp is done. It was really easy to fry in a pan. If you don't have a big deep fryer or anything like that, you do it on your stove. It's not a big deal at all. Shrimp's really easy to cook. And it's a lot better for you than the frozen stuff you buy in the bag. But if you want to use that, cool, no problem. Now, I've got some toasted French bread here. And you can see it's holding up nice and toasty right where it should be. Crusty French bread is what you want for this. If you don't like toasting your bread, please don't. It's completely up to you. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of our special sauce here and start drizzling it on here. And I'm just going to kind of wipe some to the 
on both sides here, you want to be able to taste that. Or at least I do. So once I get that one, I'm going to come over here, do this bread. Now this bread right here actually comes from New Orleans before anybody says anything. Our local grocery store imports it up here, frozen, thaws it out. It's pretty good French bread from New Orleans. It's the closest to me being there and getting it uh, for sure. And so now that I've got a good base of that sauce down, for me, I'm going to come back with a little bit of my lettuce. And I'm not going to overload with lettuce, but I want a good bit so I can taste that crunch and help protect that bun, right? Now, once I get that lettuce all piled on there like I want, I'm going to come back with some of these big tomato slices. Y'all already know we're going to go three down that big thing. Now, I'm going to come on back over here and tilt that up. I'm going to start laying this shrimp on. I think y'all can kind of tell which sandwich is going to be mine and which one's going to be uh, the film guys. This is going to be my sandwich. This is going to be the film people's sandwich. That's just what we're going to do. Now, I'm going to come back with a little bit of that shredded red onion that we kind of cut real thin. Get me some of that on each one of these sandwiches. Now, once I do a little bit of that red onion, y'all know we got to have them good old deal pickles. And I'm going to go down that bread, throwing them on there. And like I said, I don't have as many pickles on this sandwich here. You know, it's not mine. This is mine. And so now that we've got all of our garnishments on that sandwich, I got to pick this special sauce up here. Mm-mm-mm. Now that, that right there, that's how you make a po' boy from Mississippi. That right there is a loaded sandwich if I had never seen one. Now, just for good measure, you know we're going to give it a little bit of flavor pop. Now... I'd say we're complete. All right, let's hit that fold over and try this sandwich. So you kind of got to mash it in like you do a sub. Well, you got to crush it in like that. You got so much in here. Now for me, I'm going in here and I'm going to slice this po' boy in half. All right, I got it all sliced in half. Got stuff all over my hands. Look at that cross section as my good old boy Jake would say. Let's get in here and try a bite of this. Huh. Damn, it's good. All right, I'm telling y'all, this shrimp po' boy is on point. We took some 2130 count shrimp, patted them good and dry, seasoned them down with some eggs, a little bit of Cajun seasoning, some mustard, some fire shire. We put a little bit of everything in there. We're gonna put the recipe down below. Then we took and breaded those shrimp in some Cajun land breader that we added a little cornstarch to and a little bit of our Cajun Creole rub. Fried them up in our Yeti skillet at 350 degrees until they were golden brown. We toasted up our good old French bread here straight from New Orleans via the Piggly Wiggly. We sliced up some good tomatoes, shredded some lettuce, good dill pickles, and we made an awesome remoulade. I can tell y'all, this po' boy is on point. It's time for me to wrap this shot up where I can finish this sandwich. If you like what we're doing on our channel, be sure to like, subscribe, follow along. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Pinterest, and of course, YouTube. I'll see you next week with another video. <laughs> Man, that's good.